Hello everyone, I'm Steve, G0TAN, and I would like to welcome you to another in the series of Martin Lynch's Helpful Ham videos. Today what I'm going to do is show you how to fit various plugs onto bits of coax. Um, it's a question we get off asked quite often in the workshop, um, and it's part of the uh, intermediate uh, exam, the practical exercise of the intermediate exam. So it's a Hopefully it's going to help you uh, do stuff at home, um, which you know, you've never done before, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, thank you. So the plugs that I'm going to be talking about specifically are fairly common. Um, the PL259, okay, it's PL259 screw-on type connector. Um, we're going to have another PL259, this is the compression type. Um, a little bit superior to the screw-on type. I'm going to also show you how to fit an N-type plug, also a compression type of uh, fitting. The other plugs, which I will show you here, but I'm not going to show you how to fit because they're very similar to the other plugs, are the uh, BNCs. Okay, so let's get started. Right, so the uh, first one that I'm going to show you is the PL259. This is the screw-on connector, and it's primarily used for RG213 type coax. Um, the RG213 we no longer stock, uh, basically because we've, we're using the uh, Messian Palauni um, Ultraflex 10, which is a far superior type of uh, coax, um, and it's a little bit... Uh, more difficult to fit this type of connector to that uh, coax. So this is the RG213 if you still have some of this at home. Um, it's great. Um, just I'll show you quickly how to put it on. So we're going to start off the first thing when you're fitting a plug to a piece of coax <laughs> is slightly disassemble it and remember to put the back shell on first. In, in this particular example, I've only got a piece that's about 300 millimetres long, uh, so it doesn't matter. But if you've got a bit that's going down the length of your garden and you forget to put this connector on, it's a right pain in the neck getting it off again. And if once you do put it on, make sure you put it on the right way round, not like this the other way. Make sure it's that, the correct way round. So the first thing you're going to do is actually measure where you're going to cut the outer sheath. On these type of connectors, I like to line up the, the inner part of the end of the coax with the end of the plug there and I don't know whether you can see but just there underneath the threaded part this little bit here is where I make my first incision so we get a nice little sharp knife and we do a nice score just to score you don't want to uh, cut into the braiding or anything like that you don't want to cut into your thumbs because it makes a bit of a nasty mess so once we've got that done hopefully oops wrong way um, and then if I just pull that out straight down there and then once we've got that done if I'm lucky we can just peel it back and there you have your first bit of braid now with the RG213 you only have one piece of braid okay and uh, with the Ultraflex you have a, a, an inner screen as well which is why it makes it a bit more difficult to fit this type of plug so once you've got the braid out just fan it out, fan it all the way out, just tease it out, just like you're unplatting someone's hair or something like that. Um, it takes a little while, makes your fingers a bit mucky, but hey, that's what we do in this business, mucky fingers. <laughs> okay, once you've got that, you then just basically, you force that back over the sheath. Now, there are two ways of mounting these types of connectors on, on this type of coax. Uh, you can do it where you actually wrap the braid round here, the, the inner insulator, you screw that on and then you try and solder through the holes in the actual connector. Uh, the problem with doing it that way is that you, depending on the type of insulation material, sometimes you can melt that and actually put a short through. Um, the other way is you don't always make good connections. And the third, probably the most important thing is that the, the actual um, plug itself can still rotate around. And if you do that, if you do it too often, it can actually break the, uh, the connection that you've made. So you end up with a, a very bad connection there and causes you all sorts of problems later on in life. So our preferred method here is we push the braiding back once it's been un unteased. Um, and then what we do is we make another incision here to take off the insulation. And basically what you want to do is again line the two, two ends together 
you've got this pretty much lined up with the bottom of that. And if you look at that little ridge there, that's where you want to take off the insulation. Again, just cutting a little bit all the way around, try not to cut the inner cable. And if you're lucky, you can just tease that out like so. Once you've got that, make sure it's all clear inside. And if you're lucky, you push that up in there and then you can just start screwing that on. And you screw and screw and screw. It does get very tight, which is a good thing. And then a pair of pliers helps. You can just screw that down. Hopefully this is, you can see what's happening here. Right. So you need a good pair of pliers and a good strong grip. And eventually you should see the inner coming through. It does take a little bit of winding. Okay, that should do it. That should be good enough. Yeah, I can see that there. That's good. Now, what you should do now, see all this mess around here. Well, we need to trim that off. I need a pair of, actually what I can do for now, I'd normally use a pair of wire cutters, but as I don't have them here at the moment, I have to go and get them in a minute, I forgot them. I use, just use this bit of braid, this bit of uh, knife to just trim them off. And then once you've done that, you can if you're uh, fairly pedantic or you're going to do a good job, you can put some heat shrink over it. Very thin walled heat shrink because otherwise you won't get the back shell on. So what I'm doing is just doing it lightly just to trim off the copper the braid. that one. And clear up our mess a little bit. Here we go. And then what you do is down the end there you can just about see the copper in a core. Get some solder. Nice hot soldering iron and with any luck we go all the way down. Now, if you're doing this outside, um, it's probably worthwhile, it, sorry, if this plug is for outside, it's worthwhile trying to fill up the end hole with solder, if you can. Um, although, this type of plug is not that waterproof, so which is why I recommend the compression type of fittings. But inside, just as long as the inner core, of the inner conductor, is actually touching the centre pin on there, you'll be fine. Um, once you've done that, uh, you're pretty much done. Um, the only thing, if you have a, some sort of multimeter with a co continuity tester, then what you can do is just make sure you haven't got any shorts between the centre pin and the outer sheath. So that's, that's the simple way of doing the screw-on type connectors. So there you go, thank you. Okay, in this part of the video, uh, what I'm going to do is show you how to fit the compression version of the PL259. So we're going to start off with this one. Remembering that when we were fitting the regular screw-on type, we only had two parts. We had the back shell and the main body. Well, in this one, we have quite a little bit more, um, I'm going to say, bits to assemble. But it's still not too bad. Here we go. Right. And it's a good idea to just lay them out in sequence. So what you're going to do is start off like this. You're going to have the back nut. You're going to have the, the washer, the waterproof um, gland. Then you have the hat or the T hat, and then you have the main body. So again, what you want to do in this one is start off, you're going to trim the outer cable. Now remember this, this time we're not using RG213, we're going to be using Ultraflex 10, which again is a lovely piece of coax. So the first thing is we're going to trim the outer braid. Again, this one, uh, I don't know where you can see, there's a little ridge down inside um, there. That's where you're going to sort of want to make the inner conductor uh, to the, how can I say it, they actually want, want to take off the sheath too. So somewhere, again, if you line up the two ends, and I would say somewhere around about there, you don't want to cut off too much, it makes yourself too much work. So here we go. Right, gonna, again, I'm going to start off with this. Just on the outside. And a little bit down there. Much nicer to work with. There we go. Oh, look at that. Easy. So, the same as the RG213, we've got the outer braid, which again, you peel, peel back. Right. Um, one thing I, I said in the last video is that the first things that you do 
is remember to put all the back stuff on otherwise if you forget now, if I had done this um, what you what you end up doing now you've got more bits to assemble and it will be a right pain to take it off again so again start off with a back nut start off with a washer now this washer has to go on if I can pick it up has to go on next and the reason for that washer is basically it allows once you've got the the rubber insulation uh, the rubber grommet on there if you didn't have that washer it'd be very difficult to do up that back nut so that's that's the reason for that washer so we start off with this put the rubber bit on nice and tight <coughs> push that down and then you have your t-hat now again you peel the braid away now in this instance what you have here there's a light, slight split in, I don't know whether you can see it, there. That allows the T-hat to open and close. But the idea is you put it on the outside of the inner, inner sh uh, copper sheath and between that and the actual braid itself. So you just push it. Nice, easy. Right, and then we trim off like before. I've got my wire cutters. Doing quite well on this because I forgot my glasses, so uh, I've not made any mistakes so far. It's quite impressive. Right, here we go. Oops, that was my thumb. Right, so that should be pretty much about it. Right, that's nice. You can just tidy it up. And just push the gland back like that, and that is it. Right, next bit, you take this and you trim very carefully. The, the copper sheath and the inner insulation but again don't cut down right down to the core conductor just enough to break it and then you can get that and then if you're lucky you might use a pair of pliers uh, wire cutters on this just to gently tease this out of the way to get it started there we go so that's what you want that should be flush now an important thing to check here is that there's no shorts between either the braid or the inner conductor and the um, outer, the, the uh, copper, copper sheath on the outside. So that should be all clear. Once you've got that, you basically, again, get this, you line that up, push that all the way up in there, and you can see it's coming out. I'd cut it a little bit on the long side. That you then just screw up. As tight as you can see what we can do here a pair of suitable pliers and spanners very useful I'll try and get this that's it so that's now compressed the gland so that back end of the plug is now waterproof so what you need to do is just now is just to trim that copper inner to the uh, end of the uh, pin on the plug And then if we're lucky, what we can do is get our soldering iron again and solder. There we go. And then we try, if we're very lucky, we can um, get that again. And when you're doing this sort of thing you just want the solder to go down inside the pin and solder the, the actual conductor the inner conductor of that if you do get any on the outside which i'm lucky this time i haven't got it you can just scrape it off very carefully with a knife and that's that's good you don't want to leave any solder on the outside so that's, that's good and there you have the compression type pl259 thank you Okay, so in this next video, um, what I'm going to do now is show you how to put an N-type compression fitting on. This is again one of the most popular um, type of connectors we use in amateur radio. So again, we're using the Messi and Polony uh, Ultraflex 10, and this is the Ultraflex 10 N-type connector. So uh, take it out of the bag, and as before, it's a good idea to lay out the bits in sequence so you know what you're going to be doing so you don't miss any bits and things like that and uh, you, you might have one bit left over in a minute which I'll talk to you about so we start off again with the back shell just here 
again with the washer, which is a little bit more tonky than the last one, the actual compression gland, the T-hat with the split, um, the front shell, and a couple of other little bits here. Uh, these are the actual centre pins for the N-type connector. Now there are two, because this connector is actually used on some other coax as well, and they give you two different types. Uh, one's got slightly bigger, you probably can't see it in the videos or anything like that. Um, one is slightly thinner walled to allow you to um, assemble it onto a piece of coax which has a, a slightly larger inner uh, conductor. So now that I've got, uh, I'm using the same piece of uh, coax I used last time with the RG, sorry, with the PL259 on. In this one, I must make sure that I put the back end on, the rotating washer, oops, forget that, and the compression gland. So again, and this one, you don't have to be too, too, you're not going to be measuring things with this anymore. You're just going to sort of cut a piece of the uh, outer sheath off. Make sure I get the knife the right way around. I don't want blood all over the table. Especially, I've, I've got my glasses on now as well, so I should be able to see what I'm doing a bit better. So just take off probably about 20 mils. Let's see. Oh, nice. Just a gentle score down there. Here we go. Throw that over there. Again, tease the, the braid out, pull off the bits that fall off, it does that quite a bit. So once you've got that out there, again make with a T-hat and just slide that down over the outside, uh, over the outside of the inner sheath, the, the conductor, and then just slide it down, let's pull that back a bit, just slide it down like that, you like the sound effects. And trim off the excess like we did before, exactly the same as what we did before. Tricky little low, so it's in picture. Okay, right, so that's that done. Push the gland up so that's all nice. Right, so what have we got here? We've got two funny little white washers. I'll explain what they're for in a minute. Let me just excuse my hand. Right, let's get that out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Right, now what I'm going to do is, again, like we did in the last one, I'm going to trim this flush. So, ouch, take, that's my thumb. Right, take my bit of braid off, break that. Again, pull it off if we can. Come on, you can do it. There we go. A little practice. So again, check to make sure there's no shorts or anything like that, which is good. Right, now you have two of these white washers here. The first thing we'll do before I do that though is make sure which one of these pins go. There we go, that's the one. Right, so I can discard that one. You do need these two white washers. Now, I don't know whether you can see, I'm going to try, there's actually a little groove on one side and not the other. And that's the same on both of them. So what you do, you get your centre pin and you push it through so that there's the little collar fits inside, halfway fits inside that little recessed groove there. Okay. And then what you do is you hold that up and we want it trimmed off about there. So let me just take that off for you. Oops, I'll clear that up later. Come on. There we go. Make sure that's all nice and round again. That's pretty good. And hopefully if I've taken off enough. Whoop, oh, not quite, unfortunately. So I have to go back a little bit. Let's take off another couple of millimetres. That should do us. It's far too thick cable for these wire cutters. But uh, hey-ho. And again, if I'm lucky... Perfect. Right, on this one, before you put the other white washer on, which has also got a similar um, recess just inside there, which now goes the other way around, so that it's fitting onto that other little collar, we want to do a little bit of soldering. Right, so make sure that it gets nice and hot and you'll suddenly see the actual solder wick down inside that hole. 
and that'll be all gone. Nice. And what you do then is put that over that, switch him down. Nice. Main shell, if you're lucky. Line him up. Push him on. Tighten that up. Again with the, uh, the pliers. Yeah, if I can get that there. rubber seal around that end as well. And there, yeah, so one end type, one PL259, if I bring the other one over that's the screw on type PL259, that's all done. So very easy to do, it does take a little bit of practice but it's, uh, you know, if you watch the video and if it's helpful that's, that's great. Um, what I was, was going to say is like the end connector, the compression fitting and the um, PL259 compression fitting is that we have another couple here. These are BNC type connectors. Um, you can get them for the Messi and Pellini, the uh, Ultraflex 10, and you can get it for the Ultraflex 7 as well. So, but it's basically exactly the same. If I take the, uh, the back shell out, you'll see again the washer, the gland, the T-hat, and all the pins and things inside. I'll have to push that out. Oh, can't do that. But it's basically the same same thing. So if you use this video in conjunction with the information that uh, Missy and Palauni provide on our website, you shouldn't have any problems. And uh, good luck. Thank you.